Jagajaga, as todos os santos de Shimada Brahmins, esse bhakti me dando Swami Shiro para o Pai de Jagajaga, o Vaishnava Vrinda de Jagajaga, esse cara falando de Jagajaga, Shiro para o Pai de Jagajaga, a Machado Shiro para o Rio está curtindo. Param Sivahosi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Tiranda Sri Adaita Gadadha Sri Vasari Sri Gaura Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai Sama Vedita Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai Gaura Premanandri Glories to the assembled of all deities All glories to the assembled of all deities All glories to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tani 
Parama. Sarvani Parama. Someone else. Tasmat Vato Mahimisha. Tasmat Vato Mahimisha. Vineham Vadadarsha Bhat. Vineham Vadadarsha Bhat. Sadani Trini Daityendra. Padani Trini Daityendra. Samitani Padama. Samitani Padama. Tasmatvato Mahimisha. Tasmatvato Mahimisha. Vineham Vadadarsha Bhat. Vineham Vadadarsha Bhat. Padani Trini Daityendra. Padani Trini Daityendra. Samitani Padamama. Samitani Padamama. Tasmatvato Mahimisha. Found it anywhere where he 
was approached by demigods in the dress of Brahmins and uh, who asked him for charity and asked him actually for uh, uh, to give them the duration of his life and he gave it. Demigods means their enemies, right? These are the, he's called some here on this 16, uh, the king of the Daichas. Uh, Daicha means uh, descendant of Diti. Uh, there's Kajapamuni had two wives, Diti and Aditi. And so Aditi became the mother of the gods, the Devas, and the Adit, uh, Diti became the mother of the of the demons, the anti-gods. You can say we have these two forces, gods and anti-gods. Both are more powerful beings than we are. The whole the whole history of the Bhagavatam, really, the whole history of the universe is the history of the warfare between these two uh, groups, the gods. The gods are uh, there's actually a, a word that's used in the, in the Bible by St. Paul, the cosmocrats, you know, like we have bureaucrat. Uh, so as he calls them uh, cosmocrates, uh, those who run the cosmos, uh, the higher powers. So Prabhupada explains uh, that, that, uh, that just as in this city, if you turn on the uh, tap, water comes out and uh, gas comes uh, for cooking on and uh, electricity comes out of the outlets and so on because there's a department that supplies electricity and cooking gas and water. The sewage takes away the waste, all those things are there. And the departments that manage this, and behind the departments are run by people. So in the same way, in the universe, there are so many supplies that we are getting all the time, and they are run by people, managers, cosmic bureaucrats. Now, the, the modern world is, is not, we don't believe like that. Uh, because we have gone through a, an historical process. It used to be the whole world understood this, that there were these controlling beings that we couldn't always see. Sometimes you could see them, but not always. Most of the time you couldn't see them. Sometimes they would appear. But we, we tell, you know, uh, you read their stories, um, they, they, the Greek, you know, their, their, their mythology, Every little grove of trees or river or stream had its little naiad or dryad or some being that was the personality that controlled it. And then there are bigger, you know, all the, all the, you know, uh, Jupiter, uh, well, Zeus. They trace the word Zeus back to Jaws, the name of Indra. In the Upanishads, Tiaus, um, in, the, in the Vedas, rather, the Vedic and Tiaus, this becomes Zeus. <coughs> and then in, the, in Latin, uh, Jupiter means Zeus Pitar, God the Father. <laughs> Jupiter is what it means. So everybody believed all these things. So the whole world was, was not like that. <coughs> but now, now, We've gone through a historical process, uh, which uh, uh, Max Weber, you know, the sociologist, of German sociologist, the origin of sociology, of religion, or sociology in general, maybe one of them. He calls it uh, disenchantment in Zauberung. In Zauberung is the German word he used. In English, you say the disenchantment. Or oh, use another term, I can't remember the German. The de divinization. The, the gods have gone, they've disappeared. Uh, we live in a world where 
Uh, first of all, is depopulated from the gods and the lower levels, like Christianity ultimately. You know, there's some higher gods, maybe some angels, but other than that, all the little guys are gone. Uh, the lower level. Uh, and then gradually, the whole process continues until now everything is completely impersonal. Uh, and the reason is, um, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, why this process has taken place is because the hu human beings began to develop in, in, in the Renaissance, really, and the, the Europeans, and they were during the Renaissance, and then Later on, uh, the so-called uh, Enlightenment of Clairvaux. Uh, um, um, this idea that we can control the universe ourselves just by using our human power and ability. We can control material nature. Uh, uh, and to do that, you have to have the idea there's no one in control. If you want, if you want to take over the airplane, uh, you think it's just fine. There's no pilot. <laughs> there's no captain of the ship. You can take it over. So there's no God. God gets in the way of what they call rational uh, ability to control material nature, so that in fact we replace God and the gods. So with the Vedas, we are introduced to the much older worldview held by humanity for millions of years that there are the gods. Um, 33 crore. Uh, people say 33 million, but a crore is 10 million, so it really means 33. In Sanskrit, it's koti, but it becomes crore. Uh, 333 million Davis to run the place. I once asked Prabhupada, who I said, <laughs> he was in, you know, walking, and, and the Bhakti Swar Dhamma was there, and we were having all discussion about science and everything. This was in Philadelphia in 1975. And, <laughs> and I said to Prabhupada, uh, Krishna is all powerful. Why does he need all these uh, demigods to run the universe? And Prabhupada just looked at me and says, You don't know how to run a universe. And I thought, Well, that's true. <laughs> I don't. Anyway, that's how Krishna does it. He gives positions to all these people in the cosmic uh, bureaucracy. But then there are also the anti gods. Uh, this is a very old story, you know. It's basically the original Star Wars uh, that have been going on. This this battle, the whole history of the universe, the battle between the, the gods and the, the, the anti-gods, the, the demons. They're also more powerful. It's like the, the gods, they live in Swarga. Uh, they're a heavenly place. Uh, planets of Indra and so on, they're called Swarga. And, and where do the, uh, the demons live? It's called Bila Swarga, also Swarga. Uh, but Bila, in a hole. Bila means hole. Prabhupada calls it the subterranean, heavenly planet. Subterranean means below the earth. But by earth he means, of course, Bhumandala. But the idea of Bila Swarga sort of had, is like the experience of sometimes, you know, in the mountains and places, uh, there's a hole. And you go down the hole, this cave, and you go down to this narrow passage, and suddenly it opens up, and there's big, huge open spaces under there. That's like Bila Swarga. Because it's dark, because the, the sunlight and everything is cut off from, from uh, that. Uh, and uh, it, would, uh, it would seem there's a different, uh, different kind of arrangement. The, the planetary influences are not there. 
There's no sense of the passage of time. Uh, uh, and uh, the light comes from the Nagas. The Nagas have jewels on their hoods which uh, illuminate, and uh, that's where the, the snake light from the Nagas. Uh, you know, it's like, like if you go down into a cave, lot, sometimes there's snakes down there. So this, this is, uh, this is the, the lower planetary system, and that's where this is taking place. This is uh, in, in the lower planetary system, the Sutala, where Bali is, because he's a demon, he lives down there. And of course, somehow or other, the, the, uh, ever periodically, uh, the, the, the demons want to take over and run the universe. It's mentioned that when Hiranyakashipu ran the universe, uh, it was a very good job. He was a good manager. That he did a better job than, than Indra. He changed Indra out, took his throne, and ran the universe with his own people. It's just like, because everybody's terrified of him, that, that works very well. It's just like in, in the 1930s in Europe, when, when Mussolini, uh, came to power in Italy, everybody was so happy because for the first time in memory, the Italian trains ran on time. <laughs> so he was a very good manager. <laughs> or at least people were terrified of what would happen to them if they, if they made a mistake. <laughs> so, so, so in the same way, Hirani uh, Kajipu, uh, took over and ran, ran the universe for a while. So this is the this is uh, this is what the, the, the demons are trying to this battle going on. The the, the devas, I mean they're they're big enjoyers, you know, Prabhupada calls them sarkama devotees. Devotees with material desires. They're dedicated to, to Lord Vishnu. They operate under his his um, uh, authority. They run the universe so that the Lord's purposes can be fulfilled, the purpose of the universe that fallen souls can get out. And so long as the devas are running according to the established rules of the Vedas, then, then, then people get out. But the demons, they have their God project. They want to be God. That's why our modern civilization can be called demonic because it's the same God project. Let us control material nature. We look at material nature and oh, what a mess, you know? People grow old, they become die, they get diseases. It's just a mess, you know? Let's go in there, we can fix it, we can make it better. God must certainly be incompetent. Around, around my city of Philadelphia for several years, somebody had taken spray paint and written over uh, on the overpasses and the bridges over the, over the uh, uh, highways, God created disease, <laughs> right? So people think like that, that, uh, that God, if you look at the world and there's so many problems and there's so much suffering going on, either God is evil or God is incompetent. And since people have a hard time thinking of an evil God, although that theory has been there, by the way, that God is evil, uh, or that God is incompetent, that theory is also there. The uh, theology is, is there. But most people think, think, well, God, by God we mean somebody who's all good and all powerful. So this, therefore, therefore, uh, if we don't see that, there must be no God. It's just a big accident. So, but, you know, I mean, in the modern world, people are, are, are quite angry at God. It's one of, one of our obstacles to preaching is to discover that, that people are, really don't like God because he created this universe that's nasty. And they think they could do a better job, just like the, you know, 
Hirani Kajipu thinks he can do a better job. He, you know, ultimately he wanted Brahma's position. Usually the devas want Indra's position. I mean, the, the demons want Indra's position. Hirani Kajipu was more ambitious. He wanted the position of Brahma. And it's described why. He wanted to have a sufficient power that he could reverse the results of good and bad deeds. In other words, if you are pious, if you follow the scriptures, you suffer. <laughs> but if you're sinful, you prosper. <laughs> Let me switch it around. <laughs> this is stated in that. In, in, in the, uh, seventh canto, how, how this, this was his ambition. Uh, so, so similarly, today people think the same thing, that we can, we can run the universe better. Okay? We can get in there and we can fix it. Like people are getting old. Oh, that's a horrible thing. Why do people have to get old? And so scientists are working on this problem to cure the problem of old age. About, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, they discovered that um, in uh, the cell, the living cell, uh, 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 it starts to grow old because at a certain point there's a kind of a chemical switch, you know, like, a, like for a light. There's a little chemical switch and then the cell starts to get old. And they, it was in the newspapers and they found the switch that starts old age and they were saying, now we can just find a way to get in there and when it switches, you know, so old age starts, you go back in the <laughs> turn it the other way. And, and so, oh, you know, it's coming, we're going to be free from old age. And, and so actually some scientists were able to, to breed a strain uh, of, of mice in the laboratory so that they didn't get old. And when this has happened, everybody rejoiced. And then they said, oh, oh, back to the drawing board. They all got cancer. <laughs> we, have to, we have to start over again. So they're still trying. Well, you see, Hirani Kashipu had his old aid project and, uh, and so on, how to, not to die, how not to grow old. Uh, we can fix it, we can make the universe a better place. So then we can do a better job than God. If I were God, see, so many people you meet, they think if they were God, they could do a better job. <laughs> Just like in this God, if I were the temple president, I would do a better job. If I were the GBC, I would do a better job. <laughs> we think like that. Then we get that job and they go, oh, I didn't know, you know, so many problems. <laughs> So people think like that. And people are angry at God. There's a whole great, you know, so I, like I, I meet some people, they say, I don't believe in God. And they start talking about God, and they get really angry when they talk about, uh, about God. So if you, how can you be angry at someone who doesn't exist? <laughs> You know, so inside, actually, there's something else going on. Anyway, what I do sometimes when, when I run across people who say, I don't believe in God, I say, well, describe to me the God you don't believe in. And they describe something. And I can always say, well, I don't believe in that God either. <laughs> and basically, they describe some kind of a demon. You know, they think like this. So, uh, yeah. Did you 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 may, you may have uh, or may have heard that at, at, at the time that Christianity began, there was a whole uh, kind of a movement uh, throughout the Middle East called Gnosticism. Uh, Gnostics, G N O S. It comes from actually gnosis, the Greek word for knowledge is gnosis, which is like zenana comes from that. So the, the Gnostics uh, believed 
that the, the world was created by demons. That beyond there was a transcendent uh, source of all light. So, some kind of, uh, you know, imperson very impersonal actually. That, and we were fragments of that light. And, and this original one uh, expanded itself in a series of expansions they called uh, eons one after another, and then somehow in, in the 12th eon or 10th eon, one of the eons, there was some, some, some weird disruption or something. Nobody can explain why it happened, but then this last eon produced these archons who are envious of the original light. And the, the, this one archon then made more archons, and then the archon uh, these archons, uh, you know the word ar archon, uh, uh, the uh, arche, a uh, power, like we have hierarchy, you know, all order, you know, uh, it means a controller, an archon. So they, they created this stuff called matter, a kind of like dung. Uh, and to make their own world out of this, this awful, gooey matter stuff. And they captured fragments of the original light and imprisoned them, us, in this, this stuff called matter. And kept us entrapped. And that's, what, that's the situation. So just imagine, like a whole, all, all the devas are demons out to get you. This is like, cosmic paranoia with the, with the Gnostics. I mean, it was a serious thing, you know, there, there are Christian Gnostics, there are even Jewish Gnostics and pagan Gnostics at one time. It was quite, quite, uh, quite, uh, quite a following. Uh, and and uh, so this was the vision of the whole world being run by demons. But of course, what happened according to their story is that, that from the original light, they would sometimes send messengers to free you, uh, uh, who would who would give you saving knowledge uh, of the real situation, and uh, they would give them various well, in effect mantras that you could chant that would get you past the control of all these different uh, archons who, who 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 you had to escape from, and and, and so on. So they thought some Gnostics thought Jesus was one of these messengers who was sent down. But just think of what this does to the Bible, like what the Christians call the Old Testament. The creator God in the Bible is the bad guy. He's the Archon, Jehovah, Yahweh. He's, he's the bad guy. And the, the snake, the Garden of Eden story, so you can see when you look at it that, that, that how he says here is this tree of knowledge but I don't want you to have this knowledge. You cannot eat of this tree. And so the snake becomes the good guy. He's the messenger from the original light says you should eat this tree. So they reverse the whole story. So uh, anyway I just is the idea that the that uh, that uh, like the God you know because the world looks so bad it must be created by demons and there are modern Gnostics by the way some of some of the arguments that the ancient Gnostics use to show that that God is uh, the, the God or the gods are evil the ones who create the world are are evil are used by modern scientists to show that there can be no God. That's the very same arguments. Very same arguments. They show, you know, how, how oh, there are these animals like like these 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 uh, these uh, uh, wasps that they lay their eggs inside the living uh, bodies of other creatures and then their eggs hatch inside and then their young eat their way out. It's just like so evil, horrible things going on in the world. They show all these different things, these arrangements. I've read many writers, you know, who Stephen Gould at Lush say, this is the way nature is. You really think that it was created by a 
a good God. Do you really think so? So these are still, still these arguments are going on. But why is the world so bad? Because it's a prison. That's a fact. And we are prisoners. And Prabhupada points out that a prison is made for suffering. It's not made for enjoyment. So it, it actually is designed uh, to be this way. Uh, uh, that's a fact. But, but the, 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 uh, those who are pious understand our, our situation, that we are fallen, we're in this world, how to, uh, and we do know how to get out, how, how to uh, uh, have re release. And the, and the devas are supposed to help uh, in this matter. But the, the, the demons, they think, no, we can take, and take it over and run it ourselves. Uh, uh, we, we can fix it. Anyway, the whole battle comes, so much is the history of this war between the, the gods and the anti-gods. And the reason we follow this history is because it's said that just if you rub two pieces of wood together, fire comes out. So when there's friction between the, 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 the devas and, 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 and the asuras, Vishnu comes out. That's why it appears so many times. And, and of course, Krishna said, that's my mission statement. Whenever there is Dharma Shaglani, when, when, when re religious principles decline, usually some people are making them decline. And when religious principles are being upheld because some people are upholding them. So like for so, so there, there are always this conflict. When 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 uh, uh, Kamsa uh, was became king. Uh, so many demons took birth as members of the royal order, uh, and so the, uh, uh, Krishna comes because whenever they 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 take take control, there there's this conflict. Uh, a lot of the conflict happens on on earth, at least in Jamudri. There's the Bila Swarga, and there's the Swarga, the heaven of the gods. We are in the middle, we're Middle Earth, actually. Uh, so, 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 so Krishna comes out time and again. There's the, 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 the two are fighting, uh, and then Krishna intervenes. Because if without Krishna's help, the, 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 the demons would win. Because they're technologically advanced and better organized and stronger. So here, uh, but the, the, the Bhagavatam tells this really interesting story about these great devotees who appeared in the royal family of the demons. And, and I, this is something I'm really uh, curious about. Because, you know, first, first of all, it's a family fight. In other words, the, the, they, they have the same father, Kashyapa, so they're like half-brothers. You know, brother. <laughs> this is like a, it's, it's like a family fight. And, and they also seem to follow uh, many Vedic principles that they seem to have their own kind of anti-Veda. Uh, they have their guru, uh, Shukracharya, who, who comes from Vrigu uh, Muni or something, descends from an illustrious line, Shukracharya, who tells them what to do. And Shukracharya, you know, he has a lot of power. Like when the demons get war, uh, get slain in battle, he can bring them back to life, you know, resurrect their bodies, like Jesus did. He had that. It's like a material power. 
put them in this Sanjivani bath and they, they're healed. He would really like to have a <laughs> medical team like that, huh? So they, they, they're very advanced uh, in their material powers. Uh, it's a science, you know, we don't have that science anymore. Uh, the science of using mantra uh, uh, and, uh, and other things, uh, we've lost those powers. And so typically we, we, think, we think it's, we dismiss it. It's, it's always magic. Uh, 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 the, the, the famous uh, British uh, science writer and science fiction writer, Arthur C. Clarke, said, any sufficiently advanced technology looks like magic. So when we see something that looks like magic, maybe they, you know, you can't tell. Well, one year we went on pilgrimage to Mayapur, very early Mayapur pilgrimage. And the first few years in Mayapur it was very austere. Um, uh, there were no... Uh, Prabhupada made some indoor bathrooms for us, and for that he was criticized. Um, he said, you know, my disciples are Westerners, they simply can't pass tool in the fields. It's just too much for them. <laughs> these, these bathrooms is like the height of luxury, although I thought they were pretty austere. <laughs> uh, but, but the very first year, there, there were some toilets indoors, but, but we had to bathe and shave outside by the pumps. And that was really tough, you know, to try to shave with, with cold water, we are not used to it. So the second year, there, there showed up in the markets in America this self-heating shaving cream. You know, you, 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 you squirt out the shaving cream in your hand and it gets hot. So some, some guy found, saw the stuff and he brought some to Mayapur to say, hey, look, at least you know, we can get this cold water in the pump. <laughs> so, so we were standing around in our gumshaws around the, the pump, and he was showing us the shaving cream. We went, oh, look at this, you know, we're all happy. And this uh, Dobiwala, you know, the washing man, uh, came by, and he saw we were talking about something, just one of the village guys. And he came over, and, and, and he said, oh, what? He said, you know, what? Made it known that he wanted to know what was going on. He was curious. So the devotee with the shaving cream, he told him, hold out your hand. The guy held out his hand and he went shh, shh, and the shaving cream in his hand. And then it gets hot. It gets quite hot, by the way. I mean, it really is not, not just warm, but hot. Suddenly so got hot. And the dobi looks at the devotee and says, Bhagavan, Bhagavan. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. Of course, you know, we all understand that there's a, you know, at least I studied in chemistry class what they call an exothermic chemical reaction. You mix certain chemicals together, they give off heat. And somehow they had these two chemicals inside this, two separate chambers inside the container, and then when you squirt it out, they mix together and they, they gave off heat. So, but bottom on. So we think all these stories may be about mantras are, are, are a myth, it's just magic, because we can't do it. It doesn't occur to people that people may have been more advanced than we are. We always think we are more advanced than everybody else. So, 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 uh, so here's the story about these very advanced people, uh, both, both the, the devas and the, and the, and the Suras and Asuras uh, fighting with each other. So in the in the Asuras, among them, there are, as it turns out, they're great devotees, Prahlad. Somehow, you know, you send a secret agent in, into the enemy camp. Uh, just like in America, we're we're sometimes afraid. We find out that that some 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 uh, some uh, Islamic clergy. 
is secretly teaching jihad and converting people, you know, and we're trying to try not to get too paranoid. <laughs> and uh, so similarly, you know, then they, they, they send your agents, like in this case, Narada Muni. Uh, well, actually, he did it in a very interesting way because they 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 had they had captured her under Kashi's uh, Kashiku's wife, and, and she was pregnant, and her mom was in the room. Anyway, you know the story. So, so he got indoctrinated into uh, Krishna consciousness, you might say, and then contaminated his school fellows, and ultimately Shringadev intervened. Uh, he came. He appears at that conflict when there's a conflict between the gods and the, 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 the devotees and the demons, he, he appears, so he appeared that time. So here again there's another conflict, uh, uh, Bali Maharaj. Interestingly enough, they stay demon. Although they're devotees, they still speak of themselves as demons, they, because they belong to that community. That belong to that community. Just like you read in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Haridas Thakur always was a Muslim. He, he never was not a Muslim. Yeah. I mean, our pictures, we show him, you know, dressed like, looking just like, all shaved up and everything, you know. But if you look at old pictures of Haridas Thakur, he always has a beard, you know. <laughs> he looks like a Muslim. <coughs> he was just a Muslim who chanted Hare Krishna. Stay with the devotees, but every, as far as he was concerned, and everybody else, he 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 was a, he was a Niryamana. So the same way, these people are still demons, and, and and Bali is still engaged in fighting his traditional enemies. Uh, and so this time, because he's so powerful. Uh, uh, the Lord comes as Vamana to trick him. Uh, many years later, when, when, when the, the Pandavas have to defeat uh, another demon, Jarasandha, the king of Magadha, who, who had, who, who uh, when, when, when Yudhisthira was going to perform this Raja Suya <coughs> sacrifice, uh, uh, he, uh, they defeat everybody except for Jarasandha. And so they needed to somehow or other uh, get through to, uh, to, to see him. Because <coughs> he wasn't coming out to, to, uh, to, to fight them. And, 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 and so they just, uh, three Pandavas uh, disguised themselves uh, as Brahmins. With the same idea, they would ask him for some charity. And they cite the previous example of how Vamanadev approached Bali. And Bali was very munificent, I mean, uh, charitable. Uh, and so was Jarasandha. Prabhupada describes uh, Jarasandha as a perfect follower of the Vedas. His only problem was he hated Krishna. He <laughs> hated him a demon, but otherwise he was a very strict follower of the Vedas. Although, uh, on the other hand, he had captured so many kings to offer them as a human sacrifice. He was worshipping a form of Lord Shiva called Mahabharata, to whom one offered human sacrifice. Now normally, for human sacrifice, I guess that they would get some somebody that was retarded, you know, like the the the, the, the Dougies got a hold of uh, got a hold of uh, uh, Jed Bharata, you know. They would get people like that, a man animal, uh, somebody retarded or crazy or something. But I guess Jarasandha, he thought he'd offer him kings, <laughs> a really good example. <laughs> But anyway, so he was, he was, uh, had some problems there, but, but th when they went to him, uh, 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 he recognized that they weren't really Brahmanas. He could see that they were, you know, pumped up with muscles and everything like Kshatriyas, you know, 
pull those bows and I had a great deal of upper body strength to fight with clubs and everything. It's not like today's army, you know, where you, you can pick up a very powerful automatic uh, a machine gun and it's like a toy, it's made out of plastic, you know. That's why you can have eight-year-old soldiers in Africa with these, with these AK-47s. <laughs> but those days, you used that to be strong. Uh, 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 so he recognized that they, 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 they were actually the Kshatriyas. But because they came as Brahmins and asked him to fight, he, he granted them because, because he, of giving charity and Brahmanas, uh, to Brahmanas. And, and so, the same way, Bali was like that, charitably disposed to the, uh, the, the Brahmanas. So that's why uh, Vamana Dev uh, comes and, 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 and charms him. And he tells how Virochana uh, was, uh, uh, was uh, his father was similarly uh, inclined. And now you have observed the principles followed by the great personalities who are householder brahmanas, he says. Uh, Griha Medi, the householder. Prabhupada usually uses this as a kind of a bad word. But it really means one who, maybe is a sacrifice, one who performs sacrifice at home. Uh, which means, uh, when Prabhupada uses it in the bad sense, he says, Grihastha is a devotee, Grihamedi is a materialistic householder. It means uh, at least that they're uh, <coughs> following the karma kanda uh, part of the Vedas. Uh, so these, these, uh, 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 so you're following, although they are bodies of Kshatriya, still he's following these strict principles of the of the of the household of Brahmanas, uh, like that. So then, then he pops the question, as we say, the king of the Daichas, uh, the descendants of of Aditi. Uh, from your majesty, he's speaking very, uh, very, uh, he says, Bhavan in the first word, your good self, uh, your good self. Prabhupada translates it that way. It's just like if, it, like you, you speak to a king, you don't say you, you say your majesty, your lordship. You speak to a bishop, you say your grace. It's a very polite way of not exactly addressing them a little indirectly. So similarly, Bhavan is you in Sanskrit, but it's but it's a very polite form. So Prabhupada translates here, your good self. Huh? So very politely, he says, uh, you come from this noble family, uh, and you are able to varada, uh, give benedictions uh, very nicely. Uh, then, so now I'm asking just three steps of land. Uh, and of course, Bali will, huh, why do you do such a little bit of land? <laughs> but uh, uh, this is, uh, this is his, uh, his plan. So in this way, he's coming. Uh, it's, uh, uh, a little uh, subterfuge to protect Indra. Uh, uh, one of, one of the names is uh, Indranuja, the younger brother of Indra. It's one of the, the names of Ramana Dev. <clears throat> he's he, he, Indra's younger brother. So he's protecting his older brother here by, by this deception. Okay, any questions, comments? Yeah. yeah. You spoke about the Daityas and the Asuras as being the anti-gods. Yeah. And uh, I just was wondering, do they define themselves in this way as always orienting according to the Devas? We do the opposite in this sense, or do they have their own I don't know, orientation or concept, I guess an impersonal one? Um. What's their religion? <laughs> Are they Mayavadis? <laughs> Some kind of like that? 
Or do they just the, the opposite of the devas? They just define themselves, okay, we are the anti-devas? Um, it, it, would, it would seem that, you know, you know, from Bhagavatam we get a glimpse into the universe, but there's a lot we don't know. First of all, there are many more volumes of Bhagavatam than the heavenly planets even. Yeah, so what the whole story is, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it seems mostly their mission is it's like the Cold War, you know, during the Cold War there was the United States and there was the Soviet Union and they were so against each other and meditating. They became so much alike in many ways because they were locked in the same battle. And, and, and practically, you know, the whole United States defined itself in opposition to communism, you know. And the communists defined themselves in opposition to the capitalists. So it seems like this, this, this was a, at least a strong tendency, uh, a strong tendency there. They did want to take over the whole universe. They had this expansion as plans to, 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 to run the universe. We can take it over and run it better. Um, the, and some, when Vishnu interferes, they accuse him of breaking his vow of impartiality. You know, you're supposed to be neutral, you're supposed to be detached, you're not supposed to be, you're supposed to be on everybody's side, so why are you interfering? They accuse him like that. Uh, so they, 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 they seem to have different, uh, but then sometimes they're really against Vishnu. They, they, I mean, uh, at least you see in Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, he's, he's hidden away from, he's, he's such a coward, he's hidden in the hearts of all living beings who won't come out and fight, <laughs> and so on like that. You know. uh, so I, 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 generally we see them this way, the, the, but the interesting thing is also that, that um, sometimes the Lord does favor them. Uh, Balaram tends to take their sides sometimes, you know, like, like he's on his Duryodhana Guru. He, he's, like, he's like a little favorable to the Kauravas in the form of, of Balaram. And, and also, just like if Vishnu is at the top, who, who's at the bottom is an Antashesha. I mean, the, the, she, the, the Nagas are down there, but who's in charge of the Nagas is, 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 is uh, Lord, so Lord Baladev. So, uh, you know, ultimately, at least from Vishnu's position, there's a way of, of having both sides of the duality. And then to also have, have, have some of the big demons be actually great devotees. And we also see sometimes that Indra, like in the fight between Indra and, and, and uh, 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 what's his name? Vrithasura. Huh? Vrithasura, yes, thank you. The fight between, it turns out like Vrithasura is the devotee. He's an Asura. I mean, he, he, he's the devotee and Indra is the demon. <laughs> they kind of switch there. Yeah. I wish I, I, you can really get into this. I'm curious about these kind of things. Huh? Although, I'm, what do we need to know? But to go back to Godhead, but it's still it's there. <laughs> it's really interesting stuff. Anything else? Yeah. You describe the, the heavenly planets of the demon, what the whole Svargaruka? As what? The, what, what the the Bila, Bila, so that's the Bhagavatam, Bila Svarga. And, and Bila means literally a whole. So my, my question is like, what I understood that the earth is in the middle, the, like above the seven levels, and I would like to, to know uh, what are the levels under the earth and where are the hellish planets, I don't really understand. Well, the hellish planets are different. I mean, these are the subterranean heavenly planets. Uh, and it just says that the earth, earth here is, is 
Bhumandala, uh, which like goes out to a certain extent, and there are these, uh, and there's some gap between there and the edge of the universe, and and, uh, and then uh, b below that are these subterranean heavenly planets. I've always thought of them as sort of planets, you know, floating in space. But I see uh, many depictions of these, not from our tradition necessarily, but old traditions. They kind of like a system of caves. You know, you're, you're cut off and then you're, you're sort of under earth or something like that. But Svarga means heavens. Svarga has a sense of being open space, you know. So I don't, I don't really know what it's like. But they, they, but they come out, you know, especially uh, uh, Patala, the first, uh, you know, we get Patala, Sutala, Atala, Patala, you know, all the way down. Well, Patala, I guess, is the lowest. Uh, but on the, on the highest of these planets, there, there's this Maya Dhanava, and who makes, who makes spaceships that the demons fly in. Probably Vimanas of some kind or other and come up by out them. So they, they get out some sometimes. So that's that's the that's the, the, the so so we're we're the we're the we're the uh, and they're in the fifth canto each one of them is described and who lives there and what they do and and so on. But then the hellish planets down lower uh, are actually places of, of punishment. So they are below of these seven. Yeah, people. yeah. They're, 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 they're like Yamaraj's jail. Where people go and, and they atone for their various sinful activities and then go back up again. That's different. The hellish, the hells, are, are different from these, these other planets. The subterranean Bilas Varga. In Bilas Varga, there's no sunlight and no sense of the passage of time. There are places like that on Earth, too. Um, in gambling casinos, they have no windows. And they keep the lights on 24 hours a day. And there are no clocks. You forget the time is passing, and you can get breakfast any time of day. At least the ones in America like that. And so, so people just there's no there's no time there's no time. Because of course they want people to come and stay and, <laughs> and gamble all night long, all day long. So it's like that. There's no sense. But then, every so often, Sudarshana Chakra comes, and, and, and who, who, who is also the time energy of the Lord, which then, uh, then kills a lot of people. That's how they experience their karma. It doesn't come like the same way ours does. Anything else? Yeah. yeah. Krishna says in the Gita, as the sun illuminates the entire universe, mm. like from the art point stuff, but it, it appears that it is not the entire universe mm. illuminated by the sun. So mm. how it seems to be contradictory. Uh, yeah, let's look at the verse and see what it says in Sanskrit. Does anyone know? As the one sun. I think it's the same universe. Huh? Second chapter somewhere. I don't know. I, I, actually, I can find it easier this way. I like one sun. Use the search engine here.
Uh, one place, uh, that's 15.5, he says, the, as the sun would dissipate the darkness of this whole world, it's in the Jagat. Anyway, Krishnam uh, Lokam, the entire Loka, the boundaries of Loka. Loka means place where people live. I mean, it's just, a, it's just so, I think it's fine. Just like Prabhupada, for, for example, says there's, there's living entities everywhere, but if you read the fifth canto, there's this loka, there's aloka, the lands where there's no one. Uh, so there's a general principle, and then there's the details. So, yata prakashati etaha kritsnam loka, this whole loka. Loka means, uh, yeah. it can be a planet, it can be the city of Missouri, it's a loka. <laughs> loka is like, very plastic. <laughs> so I think that's what it means. Anyway, you could read like a, a text like this and then some commentators say, well this doesn't mean the, the lower planets where the sun doesn't shine, obviously. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Prabhupada says there's only one sun in the universe, and all the stars in the night sky reflect that sun. Yeah, that's what, they, that's what he said. Uh -huh. so, what, do, what do you say to that? What do I say to that? I say I accept what he says is true, and I have no idea how it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Anything else? <laughs> yeah. You spoke about that all the suffering, uh, etc., comes from this uh, tendency to control the world, you know, of this materialistic tendency. Mm -hmm. And then, logically, all the knowledge what arises from this is also contaminated by this desire to control. Mm. And, and then, of course, like all the scientific and materialistic concepts rise of dualistic thinking and this and atomic, like seeing every, as everything as separated elements. And on the other hand, you see like uh, even modern theories that are quite close to Vedic concepts, on the other hand, that reunite this dualistic thinking, mm -hmm. quantum physics or mm -hmm. system academic thinking and social science. So what do you think, how does this happen, this, this coming closer to very concepts again? Is it just a dialectic thing that it just comes and goes or it depends on the sincerity of the scientists who really search for, for knowledge or how would you explain this? Well, different ways I suppose, different, different, different scientists are different. Um, uh, usually, the best they can do is impersonal. Just like uh, Einstein is like some like a kind of science saint, uh, and because he said, "I do not believe that God plays dice and things like that," but he's really said, "I believe in the God of Spinoza." And the God of Spinoza is a very impersonal uh, kind of kind of thing, and impersonal can be very holistic. Mm. On the other hand. The followers of the Vedas, the Karma Kanda uh, section of Vedas, became just like uh, controllers. Uh, you know that 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 the the, the, the the cult of Vedic sacrifice um, uh, was 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 done to get results. It's a kind of a science. I mean, Vedic sacrifice is more like science uh, than it is like religion. Uh, because you had brahmanas who were very skilled technicians. It was like a culture of technique. Uh, and you perform a sacrifice. When you make a sacrifice, in, in essence what you're doing is, is in, in a small way, you're, you're uh, recreating the universe. 
just like in this hydron collider, you know, they think they're going to get down to the original beginning of the universe. So that 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 you 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 get results that way by 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 uh, reenacting the, the 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 whole creation of the universe, so that you can get a result. But you have to do it right, and so such precision, technical mastery is required. For that reason, we have Sanskrit grammar, because if you mispronounce the mantras, they won't work. So, so you you know, get Sanskrit grammar. You mean you have an alphabet that's super precise? You know. English, you look at you look at the, the letters, and there's not a one-in-one -one correspondence between the letters and the sounds. But in Sanskrit, you know, an A is always a, uh, and a long A is always a, uh, and a ka is always ka. It's the same, you know, every everywhere. It's, it's very precise. Also, you get mathematics because you had to make the altar exactly right situated the right way, perfectly made according to directions. You have a science of astronomy because of Kala, another thing, time had to be correct. So there was all this precise, and, we, and the Brahmanas, they had to be pure. They had to have the right conditions for saying the their right mentality to make their mantras potent. And if everything is correct, the result will be there. When we read in the Bhagavatam, you mispronounce, you put the accent in the wrong place. <laughs> Instead, of like that, oh, Vishwasura got created by a misplaced accent. So it's, it's like science, it's a culture of technique. So they, they, were, they were also trying to control the universe. And interestingly enough, uh, uh, in, 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 that, in the Karma Mamsa, you had philosophers who who, who said that really what controls the universe is, is karma. Our karma meaning our ritual activities, our sacrificial, that controls the universe. What about the gods? Well, uh, they, 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 because you say their names, Indraya Swaha, Suraya Swaha, he was offering unto the gods. Uh, aren't, aren't, those, aren't those names there? Well, they have to do it. They have no choice. They have to give you the results. Or even some people said, they're just names in the dative case. <laughs> That's all. They're just words that don't count. And so the performer of the sacrifice becomes like, like a scientist. He's all powerful now. He can control the universe. And you see that the demons also, they perform sacrifice. They're, they're followers of the Vedas. They have gurus, they, they honor the brahmanas, they perform sacrifice. They know that Indra is weak because he offended his guru. Bali actually has to suffer because he doesn't obey Sukracharya. Sukracharya curses him and the curse is effective. You know, people have these powers, these brahmanas. If, if they say, go to hell, you went to hell. You know, nowadays, you know, you're in the, driving in the car and somebody, you cut somebody off and the guy yells at the window, go to hell. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> go to hell. Because who is he? Well, like in America, every time you buy your groceries, the, the checkout person says, have a nice day. Well, you, you know, you don't have a nice day because they say so. But if you actually have a real problem to say, have a nice day, they'll have a nice day. You have the power. <laughs> we don't have these blessings and curses are not efficacious anymore because the people aren't qualified. <laughs> but at one time they were. I, 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 I believe that's the case. This is, this is like a lost science. And as I said, because we don't know how to do it anymore, we think we're all powerful. We think it's just some mythology, some story like that. So people may, may come, come close. Uh, Every so often, somebody really notices how the universe works. And then, then the scientist becomes not so much interested in controlling it as just appreciating it. But that becomes very hard to get government funding. <laughs> I mean, when you look at science, you have to ask one question. Who pays for it? 
Who pays for it? Their, their experiments are very expensive. Who pays for it? And why are they paying for it? And you'll see they want something. They're just, no government is interested in this, you know, just knowledge for knowledge's sake. Brahmanas are those people who, who are interested in, in, in knowledge as such, as the mode of goodness. Detached, but alert and, and, and interested. On the mode of passion, you always want a result. So generally, the people that pay for it, they want a result. You have to be careful in the spiritual life, too, about your donors wanting a result. Okay, maybe we should stop now, huh? It's, it's gone late. Thank you very much, Shiva Prabhupada. He, he, yeah. he.